So this is one of a series of videos which we're going to do about the genus Carpinus or hornbeams. Hornbeams are native to the UK and indeed to much of Western Europe and you'll find them growing in hedgerows, in, certainly in the south and east of the country but you won't find them growing in Cornwall. However, there are at least another 21 different species of Carpinus which are now growing in English gardens and about 17 of them are growing here. Carpinus are monoecious trees and that means that they, um, they have male and female flowers which are separate. In this case on a Carpinus they're catkins but the male and female flowers appear on the same tree. So let's just see what, um, what a, a, a flowering bract, which is what the, the female catkins become, looks like on a Carpinus. Not all Carpinus, but this is Carpinus rankinensis. It was only introduced to this country by Tony Kirkham and uh, Mark Flanagan in 1992. It was discovered in a mountainous area in the north of Taiwan, but it's proved to be perfectly hardy in the UK. And what we're looking at are the flowering bracts. And within those flowering bracts will be the seeds, uh, which, uh, quite a number of seeds, which when they're ripe in the autumn could be taken and, and sown to produce more trees. This tree we're looking at uh, was planted only in 2016 and it's made remarkable growth. Uh, and you, but you have to look quite carefully into the tree to actually see these female bracts. And as yet, there are not very many and they're only on the most sheltered and sunny side of the tree. And there's perhaps one other thing that I might just uh, introduce you to as far as Carpinus are concerned. Carpinus have two peculiar characteristics and it allows you to differentiate between one species and another. And they have parallel leaf veins. Many more veins on a leaf than you would normally see. And Carpinus rankinensis has between 24 and 32 uh, separate parallel veins, not necessarily on every leaf, but that's about an average. But more importantly than that, it has serrations or teeth and the edges of its leaves. And some of the teeth are much more pronounced than others. And in between the more pronounced teeth, there are smaller teeth. And it's really the number of smaller teeth between each of the larger teeth, which is one of the ways of making a final identification between different species of Carpinus. Quite peculiar, um, but a very interesting new tree uh, to be growing in the garden. We're now looking at another species of Carpinus, uh, Carpinus japonica, the Japanese hornbeam. And this was first introduced to the country uh, probably about 200 years or so ago although it was reintroduced in the early 1900s. And Carpinus japonica, even at an early age, uh, produces these extraordinary flowering bracts, which are much looser than those in Carpinus rankinensis, which we were looking at a minute or two ago. They form green, and then they gradually turn pink, which makes them extremely attractive uh, from a distance. And just look at, look at how pink this one is becoming. By autumn, they'll go completely pink and then they'll go white. And if we look inside here, uh, we can start to see the tiny seeds forming. Ooh, one's pop, just popped out at the base of these individual flowering bracts. Now, this, this particular tree, it grows in a rather spreading and bushy habit. It's about 15 years old, so it's made a fairly substantial tree already. 
But if we look at the individual leaves, we can quickly see how very different they are. There are quite a lot of parallel veins in the leaves, 20 to 24 here, so a bit fewer. But when we look at the leaf edge, we see that there are a number of very pronounced teeth, all of which are more or less the same length and not nearly so many uh, smaller teeth in between the larger ones. And if you were sitting down with a key for Carpinus, trying to as a taxonomist would, trying to determine which species is which simply from a leaf form, you would uh, start counting the veins and then you would start counting the distance between the large teeth and the small teeth. And with any luck, you would be able to come to a conclusion, even if you hadn't seen these gorgeous flowering bracts, which are a complete giveaway to Carpinus japonica. So we're now looking at a common hornbeam, or Carpinus betulus, and here you see a very different uh, form of uh, fruiting bract, uh, much, much open, much wider, much fuller. And the thing with the common hornbeam uh, is that when you, when you look closely into each bract, you see that this flowering uh, bract is made up of sections of three absolutely equal uh, leaves around what are three individual flower seeds. And here the flower seeds are beginning to mature. Um, and when you go down through, you see that layer upon layer of three uniformly even uh, sort of leaflets uh, form the bract and they hide the seed until the seed is actually ripe. And this is a tree that was planted in uh, 2009. So it's coming on a bit in age and is starting to flower profusely. And when you look up into the tree, again, the flowering bracts are somewhat hidden, but here they're so large and conspicuous that they're weighing the leaves down with the, the weight of the bracts. And if you turn a branch upwards, you can probably see this rather better. And when we look at Carpinus betulus and look at its leaf, we see that there are very much fewer uh, parallel veins in an individual leaf, but we also see that the leaf teeth are much more irregular and there aren't uh, that many pronounced big teeth and there are many more smaller teeth of irregular size and length. In fact, you would say that there were probably four mini teeth between the bigger teeth on the edge of this leaf. So again, each species of Carpinus has its own little unique features, not just in its fruiting bract, but also in its veining and in its leaf edge, and of course in the shape of the leaf as well. So this is an even more extraordinary species of Carpinus, and this is Carpinus kawakamii. And it comes from uh, uh, Taiwan, and it was only introduced to the UK in 1985. And the astonishing thing about it is that in our Cornish climate, it's completely evergreen. Now, who'd ever have thought that a Carpinus could possibly be evergreen, and probably in the world it wouldn't be. But in our mild climate, it's proved to be completely evergreen, and it uh, seems to grow the whole year round. And you can see, um, see the new leaves appearing now, which is the second set of new growth this year. Even in the beast from the east uh, in March 2018, this tree was absolutely full of leaf and completely evergreen. I have seen just one or two little um, leaf flower bracts, but when I look today, I can't actually find any. But if we look at the leaf itself, 
we see that uh, the leaf is much smaller. There are only about 10 or 12 parallel veins and the edges of the leaves have rather pronounced uh, big teeth and an irregular number of small teeth between them. Uh, I think that this Carpinus with the shape of leaf like this is, and certainly its evergreen nature, is quite readily identifiable. Um, but if you had to, if you just had a leaf to look at, that's the way you'd go. This tree was planted in, in 2009. Uh, it's clearly not going to be a huge tree, um, but it's made good growth in a slightly and rather attractive pendulous form. When the new growth comes in the spring, it has a little purple tinge to it, which is an added attraction, but we're going to have to wait a year or two more clearly to see uh, the amount of fruiting bracts that we just saw on the common hornbeam. This is perhaps the most impressive of all the species of Carpinus, Carpinus fangiana. And uh, it was only introduced into this country in 1992. And the original plant grown from seed grows today in Roy Lancaster's garden uh, in Sussex. And it has the longest catkins of any of the Carpinus. But unfortunately, this year our tree is not producing any female catkins and so I can't show them to you but we will insert into the into the video um, a picture or two of what spectacular catkins they really are. Carpinus fangiana um, comes from Emi Shan in, in China which is a mountainous area and uh, it was collected first in 1980 by Keith Rushforth but he only collected grafting material and failed to graft it. And Mikinori Igishu, Ogishu rather, um, introduced the seed to the UK a bit later on. Our plant was planted here in 2015 and Bernkus does stock a very limited number of plants of this. The leaf is enormous and it has between 24 and 34 parallel veins in it and again the number of uh, teeth, uh, big teeth and small teeth, there are something like three to five small teeth between the individual big teeth as you can see when you look very closely and this hornbeam has very distinct bark too, very attractive grey bark with a sort of white, whiter mottling on it which is another peculiar feature of this species. Uh, Roy Lancaster's plant grows, has grown into a, into a very tall tree of about 30 feet. Our tree looks to be spreading and we're going to have to remove some of the things around it to give it more room. But when you see this in flower I think you'll agree with me that it is one of the most exceptional species of Carpinus and relatively new to uh, Western Gardens and Cornish Gardens in particular.